Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be talking about how Palantir Technologies can beat the market in 2024, specifically looking at this one area of interest that I think that can help bring them more exponential growth. On top of that, if you've clicked on this video, you've made it to the end of 2023. Congratulations, hit that like button, subscribe to join the journey. Thank you for supporting a smaller content creator. We're gonna be expanding and bringing a lot more things to the channel in terms of content going into 2024, looking at the market more particularly analyzing a lot more AI stocks than just Palantir. Of course, we'll be keeping a good look on this top competitor, but there's going to be a lot of stocks that people are asking about and we do need to break down and give you guys updates on. So before we get too far, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just collecting on the data and dispatching it to you. Now talking about Palantir and before we get into this one thing that I think will help accelerate its growth into 2024 is what its price action is sitting at right now. We see it at a critical level of support at the 17s. You can see here, multiple touch points in closing at the last trading session for 2023 right at that 17s considering with that we need to take that with a grain of salt because after q3 earnings were reported the last quarter you had palantir that established this huge explosion of a gap from 14s up to the 17s here being able to set that year to date high of 2185 let me know down in the comments what do you think is going to be the year to date high for 2024 for pounds here i want to see what you guys are thinking but as we get into the video let's talk about what we have for the next quarter earnings for pounds here and the things that are already bullish going into 2024 and what we've seen this particularly looking at the zacks rank and why pounds here even though it does have a high valuation which is one of its biggest criticisms why it remains a number one buy for the Zacks rank. Now, talking about that, the next quarter earnings for the upcoming quarter will be February 13th. Right now, the predictions are sitting at eight cents for earnings per share with revenue of 602.98 million. What we have seen is particularly looking at this important metric right here. These are the earnings per share revisions that we've seen in the last 90 days. You can see there's been nine in terms of bullish revisions visions in the last 90 days. And the Zacks rank really takes this into a high consideration when establishing their actual ranking for these particular stocks, number one through number five being the worst. And Palantir here is continuing to have improvements in its earnings per share revisions, which is great and which is why we are seeing top investors like Kathy Wood that are investing in these disruptive technologies keep continuing to add Palantir to their portfolio. Now, one thing and the biggest thing that we all are seeing is their new market strategy to drive demand for its AIP, its artificial intelligence platform. And one of the biggest catalysts I think that we have seen is its growth in customer count on a commercial growth perspective. We've seen commercial revenue increase and we've seen commercial customer account. Both of these two metrics have helped increase Palantir's future guidance, which is why we've seen a large fluctuation in trendiness behind the stock going into next year. And particularly looking at that, we saw the customer count increase from 34 to um, 34 percent to 453 and we saw its revenue also increase one other thing that we did see is also this fourth quarter of gap profitability which a lot of people do know brings possible inclusion into the s p 500 because now this criteria is met so if we have and what we've seen historically with stocks that do get included into the s p 500 is typically we've seen about a five percent gain after that However, not just talking about its actual valuation, this does help bring maturity among companies as now you have a diversification of buying pressure from multiple different ETFs and funds that track these indexes like the S&P. On top of that, let's take into account the year to date and the growth that we've seen among some of these top AI stocks. And particularly what we saw was explosions in the hardware side of AI, this is NVIDIA. We've seen it in the software talking about Palantir and also talking about here SMCI also improved all these about 200% on average. And I think why we could see a continuation of growth with Palantir Technologies is talking about, like I said, the growth of their AIP platform and not just relying on these governmental contracts. And with the reliance on these governmental contracts is where you do see the criticism for Palantir and talking about, of course, what is wrong with Palantir? We can't just talk about all the good things. One thing that has been wrong is basically talking 
talking about its slowdown between uneven timing with Gotham's governmental contracts and also talking about that with a competition that it is facing from like vendors and data analytics software companies that are incorporating AI into their platforms for sale. With that, this is why Palantir, I think, is doing a great job branching out with their AIP bootcamp, which allows possible clients to test out these softwares for completely free. In this trial version, they claim will allow these clients to find a zero to a use case in five days. And why this is important and is a great business metric is because anybody can test Palantir for free. It's like a free subscription. Just make sure you cancel. <laughs> no, but it's like a free subscription basically and allowing you to see the benefits and how they can improve the proficiency, the efficiency, and also how do they bring cost savings to the table for these potential clients. And I think Palantir being a leading competitor in terms of these AI markets has a great chance. And I think the AIP bootcamp is the number one catalyst for allowing it to beat the market into 2024. But nonetheless, of course, Palantir does need to grow into its valuation. And one of the biggest criticisms that we have seen was that Palantir initially said that their annual revenue was going to grow by at least 30% through 2025. We've seen this. We've seen the revenues change. 2020, we saw 47%, 41% in 2021. I think when Palantir was going through this hyper growth period, but it only grew 24% in 2022. And what they're seeing is 2023, expecting only a 16% revenue growth. This is where the criticism, criticism comes in because you have a deceleration in the actual annual revenue growth rate when Palantir said, hey, we were going to see it at least by 30%. Now, this can have arguments that can play out on both sides in terms of the bullish and the bearish scenario. I think where I sit at personally, listening into this metric right now, is that Palantir is maturing as a company and it has a great financial cash balance sheet. The amount of cash that they have on hand is pretty unbelievable. And the fact that they are profitable, I think gives them a hedge up compared to a lot of the other AI stocks right there, AI, AI stocks right now that are focusing and trying to turn from that basically net loss to becoming a profitable company. Palantir has that ahead of itself. It's been making smart decisions as we've seen with the various partnerships that it has established in 2023. And I think as it grows more into the commercial sphere and diversification of its clientele, not just relying on governmental contracts, which I think Palantir has talked about that this is blaming it on the slowdowns that we have seen with the uneven timing of these governmental contracts, I think we could see a switch here. Now, of course, that's taking a bet. There's risk associated with how Palantir is going to operate in the future and how it's going to trade in the future. But I think that's where Data Dispatch is sitting at right now is I think the AIP is going to be an important catalyst as long as they can stay a top competitor or outcompete against the other competition coming in. With all the cash on hand, they have a lot of money to throw into these resources to always have the leading edge in terms of day AI data analytics technology. Only time will tell. I hope you guys have a great year. Peace out. Take care. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll catch you guys later.